Namaste. My name is Arushi Agarwal, and today we are presenting a new look uh, to look at food comprehensively from a fresh angle. We have researched multiple sources and are presenting an interpretation of Maharishis and scholars. We are not Sanskrit scholars, hence we are limited to presenting an interpretation of those who are. Food in the Vedas and in Hinduism are a lot more than nourishment for the physical body. The, this paper will examine the various attitudes towards food as mentioned in the Vedas and observed in present day Hindu life. Here's a brief, brief overview of what we'll, we were able to uncover after looking at the Vedas, Shastras, and modern Hindu day attitudes. As you can see, food is a lot more than just nourishment for the physical body. In Hinduism and in the Vedas, food is not treated as merely a physical substance necessary for the sustenance of the body, as it is in Western thought. Rather, the essence of food is the perceptible form of the Supreme Brahman. It is divided into three types according to the three gunas, or the tendencies of the mind, body, and higher consciousness. This paper will begin by exploring how various scriptures depict that the essence of food is indeed Brahman. Then we will discuss the Hindu practices of offering food to the gods, food and self-control, and the gunas. Finally, we will examine food and purity the koshas and prasad. The first aspect of food we will cover is that food in its essence is Brahman. In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, verse 24, it is said, Brahmar parnam brahmahavir, brahmagno brahmarnahutam, brahmhevate nagantavyam, brahmakarma samadhina. The English translation of this is, the means of offering is Brahman. The oblation is Brahman. Offered by Brahman in the fire that is in Brahman. Indeed, Brahman is to be reached by one who sees everything as Brahman. This verse is interpreted to mean that since the Atma and Brahman are not different, Brahman is the acceptor and giver of all sacrifices or yagyas. This verse is popularly chanted in, in, by Hindus before eating because food is also considered a yagya, because we are offering the power of God food who is digesting it and giving us energy with it. Additionally, the Brihadaranyak Upanishad says that food itself is not literally Brahman. The Upanishad says that some people say that food is Brahman, but this is not correct because food rots without life within the body. Rather, food is the essence of Brahman, but not Brahman itself. Another aspect of food as Brahman is given in the Gita, chapter 15, verse 14. It is said, Aham Vaishwana Ro Bhutva, Prani Nam De Hamashitaha, Prana Pana Samayukta, Pachami Annam Chaturvidam. The English translation is that, having become Vaishwana Agni, I exist in the body of living creatures. Going outward as Prana and inward as a Pana, I digest the food that is eaten in four ways. This verse is interpreted to mean that since at, that the, the Vaishwana Agni is seen in this picture, there are seven Agnis in the body, which are Dakshina Agni, Grihapati Agni, Vaishwana Agni, Ahvaniya Agni, Samid Bhavna Agni, Brahma Agni, and Vishwarup Maha Agni. And the Vaishwana Agni is opposite to the Manipur Chakra near the navel of the body. This Agni comes down from the Purush and it is the power of God which works with Prana and Apana, which are two vital airs, to digest food. 
The four ways of eating food mentioned in this verse are charvya, which is chewing, peya, which is swallowing, leya, which is licking, and chosya, which is sucking. Thus, we, from the shastras, we can see that food is viewed as the essence of Brahman. The Gita conveys that the proper method of eating food is to offer food to God before eating. Yagya shishta shinaha santo Muchyante sarva kilbishahe Bhunjate te kothogham papa Ye pachantyatma karanat This means that the saintly person gets relief from all kinds of sin by partaking the food that has been first offered to God as yagya. When one offers food to God before one eats, the act becomes free of binding karma. But those who eat for their own enjoyment stay bound to the law of karma. Hindus observe the principles of this verse by offering food to their personal gods or devtas before eating. The purpose of offering food to the deities and God is that it renders um, that it renders the act of eating as a form of yajna and signifies the internalization of yajna by making one's body an altar. Food is given such importance in Hinduism that there is a goddess who is known as the bestower of nourishment and food. Her name is Annapurna Devi, who is also the same as Parvati Devi. Anna means food and Purna means complete. Here is a list, a partial list of where she is mentioned in the Shastras. I will now relate to you a story about when Parvati Devi assumed the roop of Annapurna. Once Lord Shiva and Parvati were talking on Kailash and Shiva told Parvati that the world was an illusion and food was also part of it. Parvati Devi got upset because this meant that he was saying that she was an illusion too. With anger, she said that she would remove her power from the world and she would depart from it. Following this, all the living creatures were starving and dying because of they had no food at all. Lord Shiva saw their suffering and realized his mistake. Then everybody started praying to Mother Parvati to come back. Out of compassion, the Divine Mother said that she would return to earth, and she did, coming as Annapurna Devi. She started cooking food in Kashi in a kitchen. After she was done, Lord Shiva was the first person to come to her for food with a begging bowl outstretched in his hands. He repented to her, saying that he now understood that food cannot be disregarded as an illusion. Until this day, Annapurna Devi's mandir stands in Kashi, along with the Vishwanath mandir of Lord Shiva. This story illustrates that food is of utmost importance to all living creatures, and we should respect it. Anadhanam on special occasions is mentioned in ancient scriptures and still widely practiced today. Anadhanam is a practice in which people donate food to the needy or poor people. A practice among Hindus since the time of Sri Krishna until the present day in which a person's weight is matched to grains and food which will then be donated to the needy people. Sri Krishna had his own Tuladhan conducted. He had two principal queens, Rukmini and Satyabhama. But Satyabhama was proud of her relationship with Sri Krishna. When Krishna sat on one end of the wing scale, Satyabhama loaded the other with heaps of gold, eventually emptying out the whole treasury. But the scale did not move at all. Finally, she surrendered, and Rukmini put one tulsi leaf, which immediately equaled the weight of Sri Krishna, showing the power of her devotion. Thus, until this day, people carry on this tradition in special occasion by conducting Tula Dan and donating food to the needy. Food is viewed as an opportunity to exercise self-control in Hinduism. In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, verse 30, it is said, Aparenyata hara 
प्राणेशु जुफति सर्वे प्येते यज्ञ विदो यज्ञ क्षपित कलमशा The English translation is Other devotees by a scheme of proper diet offer all the different kinds of pranas and their functions as oblations into the fire of one common prana. An interpretation of this verse is that by regulating one's food and intake, we can reduce our dependence on food as energy and instead depend on the divine for energy. Thus, we offer the senses back to God and we can eventually even control the five pranas and their functions. There are five pranas and two were mentioned previously. All five are prana, apana, vyana, samana, and udana. The gunas in food and the corresponding gunas in the person is a self-feedback loop of sorts. For example, a person with tamasic gunas will be attracted to tamasic food, and his tamasic gunas will get enhanced even further, and so on. Every person is made of, of the mix of the three gunas, and the difference between people is the, dif is the proportion of each guna present in them. Those who are sattvic, like sattvic foods, like milk, fruit, grains, and vegetables. The Bhagavad Gita teaches that only juicy, soothing, wholesome, and agreeable foods should be taken for one's physical and spiritual well-being. Excessively bitter, sour, too salty, too hot, pungent, dry, and burning foods should be avoided, as should stale, tasteless, rotten, and impure food. The following verse of the Gita describes food liked by a sattvic person. Are you sattva bala rogya sukha priti vivardhanaha rasya snigdha stira hridya ahara sattvika priyaha This means that the foods that promote life and longevity, vitality, virtue, intelligence, strength, and vigor Health, happiness, and satisfaction are juicy, soft, firm, and pleasant to the stomach, and naturally agreeable. These foods are dear to the good and spiritual person. The sattvic diet was originally devised as a practice of yoga and development of the higher consciousness. Sattvic diet means food rich in prana, or life force, like organic fresh fruit and vegetables. Sweet is the primary sattvic taste because it, is, because it is nurturing, harmonizing, and reflects the energy of love. The Gita describes food liked by Rajasic people as Katva amla lavanatyusha Dikshana ruksha vidahinaha Ahara rajasa sheshta Dukha shoka maya pradaha According to the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 17, verse 9, foods that are pungent, sour, salty, excessively hot, sharp, harsh, dry, and burning, and cause pain, grief, and disease are loved by the Rajasic people. Pungent, sour, and salty taste are Rajasic, or stimulant irritant, because they activate the senses and make the mind more extroverted. Finally, the tamasic people like these kinds of food. Yata yamam gatarasam, puti pariyushitam chayat, uchishtam apicha medhyam, bhojanam tamasapriyam. According to the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 17, verse 10, foods that are overcooked, stale, putrid, polluted, and impure are dear to persons in the mode of ignorance. Examples of this are old food that have lost their flavor or are putrid like meat, fish, fowl, eggs, wine, or alcohol. Bitter and astringent tastes are thamistic in the long term because their effect is to deplete the vital fluid. Rajasic and thamistic foods disturb or dull the mind and produce unrest and disease. Canned and artificial foods tend to be thamistic as well. 
Other factors that affect the quality of food involve ethics. The mind of the cook, the way the cook food was gotten, and the way the money was earned to make food also impact food and the mind of the eater. A story from the Mahabharata illustrates these points. After the Bharat model of the Mahabharata, Yudhishthir and the Pandavas, along with Draupadi, went to visit Pishma, who was lying on a bed of arrows waiting for his departure. Yudhishthir went up to Bhishma and asked him to discourse on dharma and morality. After listening to a beautiful talk about dharma and ethics, Draupadi went up to Bhishma and asked, you were talking so nicely about dharma, morality, ethics, but what happened when I was in the, in the court of Duryodhan and they tried to disrobe me? Or when Duryodhan committed many humiliations against me and the Pandavas? Bhishma replied, my daughter, one mistake I have made in my life is living and eating the food of the Kauravs. By eating their food, my mind got polluted, and thus I was led to do some adharmic acts. Now that I am at the deathbed, and all the blood has left my body, and I am fasting, eating no food, my mind is pure, and I am able to talk about dharma and morality. This story illustrates how food can impact even the minds of great people like Bhishma, this is also a reason why many Hindus chant the name of God or sing bhajans while cooking food and also before eating to remove all negative influences on food. The Vedas advise people to do six sacrifices to purify food. The first is ahuta, which is offering food with Vedic mantras. Second is huta which is offering a burnt oblation to the devdas. Third is prahuta, which is offering food by scattering grains on the ground. Fourth is bali, which is offering food to the bhuts or ghosts. Fifth is brahmyahuta, offering food to brahmins or house guests. And finally, sixth is prasita, offering food to the ancestors. These sacrifices ensure that we can resolve our karmic debts related to the food. Every body has five koshas. Starting from the innermost, there is the anandamaya kosh, or the bliss sheath. Next is the jnanamaya kosh, or the intellect sheath. Next is the manomaya kosh, the mind sheath. Fourth, we have the pranamaya kosh, or the vital air sheath. And finally is the annamaya kosh, or the food sheath. It is made up of food that we eat. When we identify with the annamaya kosh, we say, I am hungry, I am tall, I am short. Basically, it's identifying with the body and having body consciousness. Ideally, we should begin with the Annamaya Kosh and transcend all the Koshas until the Anandamaya Kosh to realize the Atma which is within and beyond all Koshas. Usually, Prasad is received after visiting temples or doing puja and is another important aspect of food in Hinduism. The food that is offered to God is called Prasad. Such prasad not only gives nourishment to the body, but also to our mind. The food offered to the deities becomes prasad and is be believed to bestow relig religious merit on the consumer, purifying their body, mind, and spirit. Temple cooks are usually Brahmin and follow strict standards of personal cleanliness to maintain the purity of prasad. Eating prasad that has been on a temple altar is especially sacred and is handed out to worshippers before leaving the temple. Prasad is also the served as in the form of a full meal, especially on festival days. 
Many Hindus have an altar at home and offer their food before eating and receive it as prasad. As we saw, food in Hinduism is a lot more than just nourishment for the physical body, which is what Western thought mainly views it as. Food has profound consequences for the spiritual, moral, and physical aspects of a human. Spiritually, food is considered as the essence of Brahman. Food is divided into three categories according to its effect on the mind, which corresponds to the three gunas. Annadanam, or charity of food, is a physical duty prescribed to Hindus. The multifaceted view on food is taken by Hindus, Hinduism stems from Vedic literature and that in some cases is more than seven millennia old. And other aspects are a matter of further research and discussion. We realize we are attempting a comprehensive look at some of the facets of food in Hinduism and the Vedas. Hence, we might have missed some angle. We'd be happy to hear from experts like yourself to see what we have missed and then add to our research which we hope will be ongoing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to Anushi and Anukriti for this wonderful talk. Does anyone have questions? Uh, I have a small point to make. You told about Bhishma Dev's you know, story and he told, he told a sloka to Yudhishthir Maharaj before leaving this world. Maha Prasade Govinde, Nama Brahmani Vaishnave, Salpa Punna Vitam Rajan, Biswasa Neva Jayate. He says, those who have less piety, they cannot have faith on Maha Prasad. This is very, very, you know, significant. So, uh, you talked about, you know, three, <coughs> like, Sattvic, Rajasik and Tamasic food. But there is a food which is beyond these three modes. And that is Maha Prasad. And that's why, you know, the, the three modes, to transcend the three modes, one has to take care of what he eats, not only physically, but what he takes through mind also. So we have to think about food for the soul, not only food for the body. What is the food for the soul? And that food is known as Krishna Katha. And Parikshit Maharaj was listening, you know, and that is the food for soul. It is elaborately described in our scriptures. So food has different, you know, levels of understanding. And especially present time in Western world, the vegan movement is, you know, very, very prominent. And some of the people have confused about vegetarianism and, you know, all those stuff. But in our, you know, philosophy, there is not like vegetarianism or non-vegetarianism. Actually, in Bhagavatam, there is a sloka, jiva jivasya jivanam, every living entity to survive has to kill uh, so many living entities. Even rice has life. That's why they say that we are neither vegetarian nor non-vegetarian. Milk is coming from the blood of cow actually. We are Mahaprasadamtarian. That means which transcends the reactionary plane of Sattva, Raja and Tama. So there are many, many elaborate explanations about these things and how it influences individuals, you know, consciousness. If we can include that, it will be very nice. Thank you. Arushi and Kriti, um, wonderful. And Sanjana, the same thing. Um, I simply want you to know that you were most articulate, your recitation was wonderful, and what you did today made me proud of you. And Thank the you reason so for that simply Thank is you. that all those critics who keep telling us that our young people have got nothing to do with our own culture, that they are alienated, that they have got no desire in order to understand what Vedas did or what our ancestry is and what our heritage is, you have convincingly challenged them. And that is why I want to thank you. And Sanjana, I want to thank you also. You are articulate. You presented it beautifully. It was superb. And I want to thank you 
and congratulate you. And I think you are the models for our own young people who ought to be doing what you are doing in colleges, in universities, in high schools. You can not simply show your identity and raise that flag, but you can tell them that we are part of that great civilization that has done all this. And I think I want again to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to echo the same thing. Uh, you know, you really brought uh, beautiful recitation of uh, source slokas from Bhagavad Gita and other sources, good pictures and summary of the things, and uh, very nice uh, stories that you also complimented with. And uh, of course, food is the anna, you know, that is the first sheet that, that every, you know, every living being has to survive. Uh, you may also add one Upanishadic uh, uh, story that comes uh, to show the importance of food. A, a Acharya, a Guru, asked the disciple to be hungry for 10 days. Mm, sentence in Upanishad, Annam na nindyat tadvritam. Anna means food. Food should not be uh, insulted. Okay, it's very important. You, you young generation, you are great. I too appreciate that parents. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Arushi and Anu, it's fabulous. All that I wanted to say is, it's been an incredible learning for me. Many a times when people are called to come and give a talk on any topic, uh, I'm only sharing what I do. I refer to several books and go and talk before whomever we are asked to talk. It is just sharing the content of what we read in the book. But some people live the life and when they come and share, just like how we heard uh, Nandaji and uh, others talk as well, it could make a great impact because they are just speaking their heart. They are just sharing their life of how they have lived. Today, the way you both spoke, it just felt like, are you just talking the walk or walking the talk, whatever it could be. So the message for me is that once I go home, I should begin to live this way. So such a great impact you both have created and all the very best for more and more success. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, quick, uh, quick comment, uh, Arushi and Nankuradit. First of all, thank you for taking the time. And uh, obviously you are, you know, the, the role models for the next generation who can uh, transcend this uh, knowledge. Um, just to make one thing, you know, small comment, you know, based from my experience, you presented a very complicated topic, and very simply put. You know, the concept of three kinds of food is very simple for some of us who grew up with this. But to get that message out to the new generation, it is not that simple. Mm -hmm. You know, so each one of those topics can be a detailed analysis because you're gonna get a lot of questions, so why it, and why, and why, and why. Yeah. So, so we really appreciate you taking this time and look forward for you both, you know, to present and uh, empower more people to understand the concept of those three kind of foods. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies, uh, I hope everyone noticed that over here was the goddess Saraswati Devi. And as you stood there, you made us feel that the Saraswati civilization is alive and well. So please continue this. I'm thank sorry you. to interrupt, but just for the sake of time, we need to move on to our next presenters. But thank you so much again. Another warm round of applause for 